Today we're blessed with Melinda Nelson for our guest speaker. She was born in Crosby, moved to Minneapolis to grow up, and came back to Aiken, and she found the love of her life. <laughs> and anyway, um, she's gifted in repurposing and just so many ways God has blessed her, and she's going to tell us and speak on our talents and, and uh, speak on our great God. And I would just like to offer a little prayer before we start out. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending us your son at this time of year. We want to honor and thank you and glorify you in all that's said and done. We ask for your presence and your blessings here this afternoon as we listen to Melinda's words that you have put in her heart. We thank you for this, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give Melinda a warm welcome. Hi. I just have to make sure the mic is good, because I will knock it a few times. I don't speak often, so I'm always like, I, it's my voice. And, um, and I want to move my hair, because it's in my face, but I won't, because I'll fling it. I've done it before. So it's only my second time with a mic on my ear, so... So you'll, you'll see me stop, but that's why. Um, yes, my name is Melinda. I, um, I've just done a few speaking engagements. I used to decorate, I still do, for some events, women's events. And I was asked to speak for just like 10 minutes at, a, at another event about what I decorate with. And that's how it started. I'm super shy. And so when she asked me, she was very well respected, and I, her husband was the superintendent of the district of the denomination I was decorating for at the time, so I was like, okay. <laughs> so I did that, and I can't say it gets easier, but it is fun to talk about, and you'll see now my nerves will start to go away, because, you know, that shaky voice thing. And then when I start talking about all my junk, then you'll see me get into my flow so but I just wanted to explain I for some reason was very nervous about this one and I'm not sure why last week I was just attacked with a lot of you know you get the lies coming in and I mean it's your fair game if you're willing to stand up on this stage so <laughs> so I was going to but then you wouldn't be able to see everything so I was like because oh. yeah I'd rather just kind of hover behind you but I, um, God blessed me with a, a friend stopping by on Friday, and she spoke some words of life into me that I didn't know I needed, but apparently I did because it was very touching. And, and then I was like, okay, game on. And that's when God whispered to me. He said, you're focusing too much on what you're going to say and not enough on what I want them to hear. And so I have been praying since then that you would just hear what he wants to speak to you today between the creative stuff and the little tidbits of serious I put in there because I'll do that a little bit um, because he brought you here for a reason and he is the one that will speak through me and he will be the one that speaks to your heart because he knows your heart, I don't but I love your heart I actually had just listened to something yesterday that says your brain works out of two different things. can't remember what the word was. It doesn't matter. You won't care. Um, your brain only can function in fear or love. And so I'm choosing today to function in love. And so I just encourage you to do the same when you are coming up against something that's not at all in your comfort zone because he's pretty good at taking care of the rest. So what I'm going to do makes basically now is just start showing you a lot of junk and what I see that I think is pretty, and then we'll go from there, okay? Okay, so, and I'm well aware that you might think it just looks like junk. Totally fine. I know, my mom is, this is not her decorated style, and she'll just give me the sweet, oh, nice, because, but to me, it's beautiful, and I just want you to, encourage you to find beauty in whatever you see, okay? So I'm going to start with this really nasty thing that no one vacuumed for me at home. How many see wood pile and a fireplace? 
like, let's throw it. My husband actually was going to, and I was like, oh, no, see, we can, we can take it, and we can put it on the wall like this, and you can put magazines in it, and you can drape a blanket off the side of it. Yeah, so that's how my brain functions. <laughs> this one is junky, but I still, it's been moved around our house because I do have plans for it. But so that kind of gives you an idea of what I see when I say junk. This is the dirty junk. But I'm going to get rid of it now because it's really annoying. And I apologize if I breathe heavily into the mic. Is it too close? We're good. We're good. Okay. So I'll just start flinging stuff. I'll start with this one because I just took up canning last year. I'm having fun with it, but does anyone have these? And if you have an idea besides a wreath, I have seen where you put them as a wreath. But if you have another idea on what to do, I have bags and bags full. But I started making some ornaments. So this one's just a piece of paper painted black. It may or may not have little Debbies on the inside because <laughs> that was the cardboard of the day. And they were disgusting, by the way. But I was getting them for a treat for my husband, thinking he'd like them. He's like, oh, those are gross. I don't, I don't like any of them. So... Um, let's see, I have more up here. I have just plain. There's one here. And feel free after to come look. I know it's really hard to see up here. Um, this one is just greenery and little doodaddies. This one is really simple and just says joy. But that was one thing I came up with. I'm sure if I Pinterest those things, whatever they're called, there's probably a million. But just looking at them and saying, okay, they're just sitting everywhere. <laughs> they're just sitting in a bag in my pantry and one in my studio. And what can I do with them? Because I really just, they'd be great like tambourines if anyone wants to come up with that. Um, you can have some of mine. I got lots. We also, this was a hog trough that I found at an antique store. And my... Excuse me. My vision was to um, maybe put plants inside. We did put a top on it so that I could place things. I thought books would fit better, but just a note to yourself if you want to find a hog trough, the it, little books are all that fit. But I, was, I could fill the whole thing with plants. I have a lot of plants. So that was something. But I just was drawn to the rust. I always say rust is my favorite color. Rust and patina. Now I've added patina because that's a fun word too. And, it's, and it gives you more of the greens and stuff. So I say patina as well. But let's go on to... Hi. Let's go on to frames. So maybe you have a frame that you don't like the picture of. I don't know. Or the glass breaks. There's a million things you can do with frames. Um, you could put, if you have glass, you could put a pretty piece of paper behind it and use it as a whiteboard. You can take a piece of thick cardboard or the back of it, paint it chalkboard, put it in there. And here's a tip with the chalkboard paints that are so expensive. Always do your base coat or two in a, in a, that better. I breathe heavy, I guess. Um, a base coat in just a plain black because it's just a waste to keep doing chalkboard paint over it and over it and then make sure that you cover the whole paint surface in chalk and wipe it off or it's not going to come off. But on to other things. Um, here's one. Well, this one was for an event. This is just a piece of cardboard made to look like those little letter boards that are so popular right now and just painted the words on for that. But if you have a frame with the glass in it, oh no, I forgot that piece of paper. Oh well, flying with it. You can um, just hot glue the glass in there and then you take a phrase you want, put it on the computer and find a font you love and then you print it off and you tape it on the back and use a paint marker or a paint to paint on the front. So you don't even have to have good penmanship 
or like your handwriting because it's not you. It's it's copying. It's perfect. So I do that with a lot of things. And then, um, yeah, it's versatile because, you know, it scrapes right off. So this doesn't have to be Christmassy all the time. In full disclosure, <laughs> we're in a hot mess at our house, building and and, like, building and building and we have a lot of stuff because we like doing this so we kind of save everything so I couldn't even find one of my frames I have frames I know I have a box of frames with glass but I couldn't find one so I had to go to the dollar store so that I could show you (laughs) so now I have another frame but I was like ah so if anyone wants a present I'll (laughs) draw names because I don't need another frame I, I didn't even tell my husband. I was like, no. Because he, he did say at the beginning of the week, you want a frame, I'll get you a frame. But then he forgot. So, But it needed the glass too, and I don't know if he had that power in him. <laughs> okay, then we had couches that we had to get rid of. Well, one, we had a dog rip up a couch. And in that couch, we had these big, awesome springs. You see that? Um, I actually had I had put one. I'm scared to take the branches out because uh, never mind. I put one down and we screwed it like to a board, and you could put books in it. Looked really cute, but you could put it on the wall and hook things to it with things that you hook things to other things with. <laughs> that's when it blanks, it blanks. Um, so that's one. And a side note. I love decorating with branches. And yes, these were my Easter branches. That's why they have little white flowers all over them from the dollar store. But then I was starting to put little bee- holly beads on to see if it looked Christmassy. But I'm well aware that there isn't little blossoms on Christmas trees usually because it's freezing. So, But I've used these branches for a million things. So if you see a branch, there's a lot of fun decorative ways you can use it to do stuff. I'm hitting myself. Okay. But then, back to springs. Excuse me. This is from another couch. They're big and small springs. And then we just bent them because they were the bent, the big, big ones. Yeah. I don't know technical terms of springs, but if you do, you can enlighten me after because this is just a wavy one. But this is for jewelry and scarves or more jewelry if you don't have scarves or lots of scarves if you don't have jewelry but you could do miscellaneous things I just thought it was a fun hanging thing we've done a lot of these things with pianos that were going to be thrown Um, and I'll sometimes put words like rejoice or worship along the keys or up here and I just think it's a fun little especially if you have a musician in your life it's a fun little way to save a piece of I'm not doing anything it like it's like yelling at me um, to save the keys. Yeah. Oh, and here's another one where you could take a window instead of a frame and put the words on the back, and then stick it in there. And then you could, you know, have it for every holiday if you had a favorite saying. But it just depends on what you like. So that's another option. So I'm just trying to show you that it's very easily attainable. You don't really have to be crafty. It takes some time, but it's actually kind of fun. Well, I think it's fun. I'm sure you know, these are graders. It's just a fun way to mix them up a little. This is actually, not that anyone that lives out in the Lakes area's husband's going to let them have theirs, but um, I was using this as my kitchen towels basket. What's it? Dirty basket? Dirty towel basket? Yeah. So it's a fish holder thanger. I don't know the technical term because we just throw them in the, underneath the seat of the boat. But there's this. And I was really loving it, but then it kept coming off of where I had it hooked. So I have yet to get it in a secure place, maybe in my pantry, because it's kind of a fun way. Did I breathe? What happened? Um, this was one thing. If you notice, there's some books around... I had an event that had to do with words and books. And 
first of all, don't worry, book, book lovers. I am a book lover. These were books that were being thrown out by a St. Cloud bookstore. Let's just say I had to glue the pages shut because it was a Christian event and these books were <laughs> stuff I'd never read before. <laughs> I'm just, they were steamy, I'm not going to lie, and probably why they were throwing them out. So my kids are like, can I help? I'm like, mm, I don't know that I want you stumbling on some of this because, you know, I, there was a few like these here that I would scan to make sure there was nothing inappropriate because you just see that, you know, that one page would be open on the table that the centerpiece was and they'd be like, oh, and I'd be like, I don't even know what it means. So these are glued and, um, and then it was called your story, the event I did. So I would write your story is beautiful and your story is precious and stuff. And now these have Christmas ones. So if you're getting rid of books that you're like, Eh, and they are really, or you find books in the trash or something. I'm, excuse me. I'm not for tossing books unless they're. I've actually burnt one book, but it's because I got it thinking, oh, this one has been recommended so good. And it was so risque that I didn't really, and I know it wasn't that shades of gray thingy. It wasn't anything like that. I know. But, um, I just started reading it and I was like, I can't have this in my house. So that was a kind of a spontaneous ah moment. It was, it was interesting. Yeah. So books. Oh, yes. And then this is another way. If you have a book that's falling apart that you love, I actually had made a chandelier at the same thing out of these. And you just glue them, fold them and glue them. And it was so simple. It was time consuming, but it was so pretty floating up there. And I want to hang some in my house now. <laughs> they don't travel well if you do do that. Because I was like, now we're going to put the chandelier in our house. And by the time the people that had used it for the event brought it back, it was like, yeah, we're just not going to do that anymore. Because they were like smooshed and smashed. You can see, this is actually does hang in my house. It's one of my favorite little pieces. Excuse me, I just feel like the music's just shooting out of it. But it's, it was very old. I found it, I think, at a flea market. And maybe it still had some music in it. But the nice part is I just filled a plastic bag with dirt. And then I stuck it in the hole until it was nice and wedged. And then covered it in rock. So I didn't pull the whole thing out. And it should still be usable if if it was usable to begin with. But I bought it for the beauty of it. Same with this little guy. Oh, I think it's... Oh, sorry. Oh, I think it's so cute. Can you hear me still? Okay. He's cute down there. But I haven't come up with something for him yet. I don't know if there's something. See, there's the patina. Patina color. But yeah, I'll probably do something on its side. But... I don't know. I think it might be redundant to put more of that plant in there. <laughs> It'd be like, it comes out of everything. I can't do it. Um, do you have an old chair that you love that is not really something you want people sitting on? I think these are beautiful chairs. Um, but I would not let any of my family members sit in it because none of them are small. And they all have the gift of their father's plop when they sit. So it's, it's kind of like they like their legs go out halfway down and poof, they land. He's broke a bed that way. I promise. It, yeah. Going to sit on the corner for his socks. Poof, crack. Yeah. So this is a... I actually, at my house, I have hung it on a wall and made a shelf, which I, it took up too much room here. Are you going to have me do that? I'm just too... See? <laughs> I can't get my hair out. Okay. Is it on? Yes. Is this better? Now when I spit, I can move it away. <laughs> so yes, I have plants and books on mine, and I hang it. I just felt it took too much real estate up here. 
And same with this um, cute little crate. <laughs> what is this, people? Um, that I wanted hung, but that's another option on just things that you might think, oh, that doesn't have a use anymore because it can't be sad. And well, that could be sad. And if you're very delicate and gentle and wear petite clothes, that'd probably work for you. <laughs> not in this house. I mean, not this house, my house. <laughs> um, another thing, the wash bin. I know they're really popular now. I'm not exactly sure what everybody uses them for. I had thought about using that for our studio sink, but then I found a big, heavy concrete one that my husband loves me for finding, and I want that one in there because it's big, and there's going to be paint everywhere. But this one now houses blankets and games. There's only a couple games right now, but... Um, during Christmas, more games will come up because they come up from the basement and then they sit on the table for two years. And then, so they're going to go in there. But I have, I'm using, well, I'm going to use this. I had it, but I didn't have the top. And then my daughters and I found the top that I wanted to use on it. So now that will be another place to put stuff in my house. But I'm behind the couch, it works good with the Christmas table. This is a, I just think these are pretty. They used to make things so gorgeous, don't you think? Like, like now a pulley is just a, a pulley. But back then, back then, I don't even know when then this is then, but there just was such a quality to the work. I mean, you see it in the houses and the architecture and everything, too, in small towns and stuff. But so that was just a, something I thought was pretty and I had to hang on my wall. Same with that pulley in the middle there. I think it's pretty, but that one's a little more beat up. This one has just got such character. But then, you know, is this just a whisk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I get stuff at auctions because I think it's cool, and then I have to. But, you know, I'm seeing, like, it could be a letter holder or a photo holder or hang it on the wall, put it there and there. But I, admittedly, when it's this rusty and stuff, I won't whisk with it. You're welcome. But, um, yeah, I just think they're just so fun. There's just something fun to that. Um, let's see. Most things are just kind of speak for themselves. Oh, I have another addiction besides plants. It's putting things, um, plants in things. And I have, this one my mom deemed not worthy of applesauce and things because it didn't, I don't know, it, all the food got caught on the top because she has the better one, and then I found another one. So this one became a plant thing because it just, it, the angles and centrifugal forces of stuff, I don't know, the food just stayed on the ring and it didn't, it didn't work for what it was meant for. So instead of throwing it, I was like, oh, another place to put my 5,000 spider plants I have. <laughs> another thing, if anyone wants a spider plant, I do. They they procreate like nothing. But um, if you do this, I've got several colanders. I do it to um, have things in. What I have found, though, is I've almost killed them because they dry out so much faster because of all the air. So you just have to remember to water them much more often, <laughs> which I may or may not have learned the hard way. And this one is happy with me now, but he was really mad at me before when I was like, what's your problem? I water you once a week. You know? He likes almost twice with the... Because spider plants are, like, not hard to... Not easy to kill? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, not hard to what? Yeah. So the fact that he was getting mad, I took my cues. But I have a couple other plants in... Oh, this one. I do. This is a candlestick holder with a colander on top. Oh. Glued on there. And this one, too, was like, um, hello, you're going to have to water me a lot more than you're used to. Um, but it seems to be working. I just have to make sure I bring them to the sink because they drain nice and water everything underneath it. But it works. It works good. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a rake. I'm, like, looking around because, you know, what will happen is I'll, I'll walk away and go, oh, I forgot to tell them this. I think you'll live. It'll probably, you won't even know. I think I have dirt on the floor, but 
I think, yeah, there's a stump. Oh, I can show you these. These are all like works in progress, but lampshades, I kind of like doing lampshade stuff. So if you tear off all the fabric, if it's awful, this one just has the twine on the sides. And I kind of like the simple of it, because I don't even have a lamp, so really, I don't need them. I just find them fun. But you could hang them. Yeah, they have awesome, excuse me, um, corded light bulb things. Now you can find on Amazon or Ikea if you ever go there. I know they have a lot. So you can hang them just with a light bulb, and they can look pretty. But this one I tried to paint to look metallic. I was getting there. I think I may have stopped because only half is done. Some of these I did pull out because I'm like, oh, I can show you those. This one I was having fun with. Um, there's like a fuzz on it. But again, just haven't got to it. Ooh, that was pretty. Anyone? No, just kidding. It's not me. Um, yeah, so there's... There's those options. Then I was trying to do a Christmassy one, and I was so encouraged and so like gung ho on, I'm gonna make a Christmassy one. And then everything got really busy, and I was like, and I almost finished it. But it is, ah, in here. It has little icicles and greenery. And definitely a tip is to use the greenery when you first take it off your Christmas tree, if you take it off your Christmas tree, because the drier it gets, the harder it is to work with. But that was kind of fun. I was thinking of dangling little icicles down here, but I did not finish. But it still gives you an idea and an option for the different ways to do it. So, ah, I'm like, oh, I have that. Oh, this is. But, um, yeah, oh. This one is fun too. The little clothes pants holder thingy. I'm not sure the technical term. Hanger thing. Because <laughs> my husband works construction and we don't really hang any pants. <laughs> so I'm going to paint it and make it cute and leave it that way. But I guess you can see kind of how my, my eyes see things. I think... The Bible says we're all created in the image of God, and I feel like this is an aspect of him. I tend to have deep inside of me. I had read something, and I can't give the exact quote, but it's by C.S. Lewis, and I can't exactly remember. I thought it was in the screw tape letters, but then it was somebody else quoting him, quoting, so I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> You know how that works. The internet gives you all kinds of Abraham Lincoln sayings. Um, but C.S. Lewis had said that we all reflect a portion of God, and we are the only one that can reflect that partic particular facet of him. And so, you know, it's our job to reflect him in that area to show others him and a new facet of him. And actually, it's quite beautiful if you think of people like that, especially over the holidays when it's a little crazy and everybody's a little bit more, I don't know, stressed. Like, I don't like to shop once Thanksgiving is hit. I'm just like, done, because it just feels like there's, a, there's joy in the air, but there's also a tension in the air. I don't know, because everybody's got their lists and they're going, going, going. But especially if someone is affecting you in a way that makes you feel negative feelings towards them. That's my nice way of saying somebody that annoys you. Then um, realizing that they, well, for one, are made in the image of God, which is huge. And it's hard for us to remember that on a daily basis in general. But ask God to help you see facet, the facet of him that they may not be fully reflecting, but is inside of them. Because you have to choose to reflect it to a point. Because if you, you can only reflect what you're focused on or focused towards. So you can't reflect the light unless you're actually angled towards the light. Does that make sense? So help, it 
kind of cool to think of it as helping others and yourself angle towards God more in order to reflect Him and make His glory known on this earth. It's pretty beautiful. And you can tell when somebody's in their zone where the facet of God that they are and they're embracing it because they do glow in a different way and they do shine His love and it is beautiful. And you might not know what it is and I didn't, but to see it and then understand, oh, they're in that sweet spot of what he made you, them for. I look at this stuff and I see, oh, you were a hog trough, but you have another job now because I think you're cool. And I feel like that's what God does. We have purpose. And if we're on this earth, we have purpose still. And so maybe we aren't fulfilling what we thought our purpose was anymore or maybe life has changed we've retired you know our kids have grown up or we just started having them but there's always a purpose and so whatever you were isn't what you're essentially going to be and so if you're struggling with i don't know what to be doing right now just ask him because he's like uh when you're ready and you ask me I do have purpose for you because you aren't. I shouldn't use the hog trough because it's. <laughs> you don't tell women they're hog troughs. <laughs> Note to next time. Okay, but you know, it just. <laughs> the just oh, Melinda. Yeah, it, it might have been something, but now it's something else. There's always a purpose, there's always a reason, and God has it all laid out for you. We just have to ask and then be willing to listen (laughs) because sometimes it's really out of your comfort zone and you're standing on a stage. So (laughs) just a warning, (laughs) just in case. But yes, so I feel like I'm embracing that facet of God that I'm allowed to see and that's how old things or used things or weary things can be made new. And that's pretty much God's overall story, is restoration. So it's a pretty awesome thing that he lets me see through his eyes. Because I'm pretty sure if he decorated his house, it would have some junk in it. (laughs) I know. I'll just let that one one go right there. (laughs) But okay, so I just want to encourage you that you do have a purpose and it might not look like it did even a year ago but he's got great things for you he has always has great things for you we just have to uh, focus on him and reflect what he shows us and try some of these things I know they're some are really easy and some are a little easier (laughs) I don't know I just take it naturally so I can't tell you how hard something is. But if you have questions, ask. I'd love to share more. I try not to go into detail with the whole how to do stuff. But I want to encourage you to try it. Try something new, even if it's not going to be perfect. Because we're all imperfect. Period. And I just had a little thought couple weeks ago come into my mind and I was I'm going to keep that but it was life is short and I just blanked it (laughs) that wasn't the same I totally was like and it's uh, yeah it was something something about see eloquence mm, I'm just me but life is short and perfection steals its joy I think that's what it was pretty sure that's what it was it is now that's what it was <laughs> so um it, life is just way too short to be perfect in anything because you can't be but through christ we can be as perfect as we humanly can be in the areas that we let him do it like okay i'll admit this talk is not perfect i get that but i did say okay god i'll do it if you want me to but you just you do it because and so I was going to say, just like my talk, that I was like, never mind, that's not perfect. So, yeah, just try things. 
imperfectly. I always joke that I'm imperfectly, I'm perfectly imperfect because I'm really gifted in that and it's, it's okay. It is. So I'm going to end with a, um, showing you how imperfect things can come out when you do it, but do it anyways. Okay? Just do it anyways because if you do it with God, it'll be good and your legs will be warm. So I have to put the mic down though because otherwise you're going to get a bench up. Boom, boom, boom. I totally blinked. I was setting all this up with the sweater and then I didn't do the sweater. I'm so embarrassed. So, okay, rewind. Pretend you don't look at my legs, okay? <laughs> okay, got an old sweater that doesn't fit anymore? No, I'm gonna add. Okay, old sweater, doesn't fit. Or, okay, it could fit, but I'm not gonna wear it. <laughs> and mama scissors that no child is allowed to touch. Anybody guess sewing scissors? Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing with those? I'm cutting fabric, I promise. So, if you cut the arms off, which, this will take a second. Got some elevator music? <laughs> so, which I was gonna tell you to try, but then you already saw the imperfect part. So these are work for that. You could also, make a glove if you do like you know this is the cuff and cuff and then you could just you could hand stitch you don't have to know how to sew I mean you have to know how to hand stitch but you don't even have to do it that well just do it tight and do a lot of knots lots of knots and then you're good so if you do that that can or just leg warmers these I'm like just sweating from these you can also oh, Okay, another, talk amongst yourself for a second. Oh, come on. I always pick the junky ones. Oh, okay. Where did the, oh, that's on, yeah. <laughs> Under pressure. Okay. Oh, anybody else need a drink of water? Yeah. Okay. So this little bugger, you'd probably want to sew up this side if you did this, but. Hello, I'm warm and cozy. Does that work? You can do that. Or, I did peek on Pinterest. These were my ideas, I promise. Well, before Pinterest stole them from me. But I've seen women, um, okay, this one's really short. It's like a little tiny crop top. They've like sewn up this, <laughs> made a pillow, basically, out of this. But I think I have like one of those really short ones that like goes right up under the guy's belly because it's not very long. Um, also, you could, you could sew along the bottom and then you could sew two straps up here and have a cute little handbag for the winter that's like, yes, this is my winter handbag. So you can use these for gloves too, but it's just another idea to do with sweaters. Okay, now we fast forward. Do everything imperfectly, but try, it's good. And then I show you <laughs> my sweater hand gloves. And that was supposed to be the end and I was supposed to walk off, but here I am still here. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't even have to sew them. I, I encourage you to, but yeah, I have some I sewed. And they're like, you know how sweaters flatten when you sew them, so they like really weighing her out, but I couldn't find them. So you got these. So I hope you've come away with some inspiration on making something. Just for, it really is fun to try, I, but at the very least know that you are loved and you are here for a purpose and you can do anything. Ooh, hello. <laughs> oh, you can do anything through Christ who strengthens you.
Thank you, Melinda. That was beautiful. Um, I especially like your um, challenge to to find a new purpose this year at Christmas. Um, we've got a whole half a month to really pursue it. Um, let's be lights, and let's look to the light, and be purposed by God. We will close now with uh, Silent Night, as always, and and uh, thank you again for coming. We love you all, and we love to have you, and we just enjoy putting it on.